Okay, so let's have a look at the next step then. These indicit equations. Before we do that, though, a little bit of a preamble on these things. What I didn't mention in particular, but was implied, that was when we transpose informally or solve equations, what I'm looking for is the inverse operation to undo something. So, for example, if something was added, then how do I get rid of it? The inverse operation would be to subtract it. And, of course, addition is the inverse to addition. So that could easily be the operation, the negative, the minus, and the inverse of that minus would be add to both sides. So they could both be, they're the inverse operations of each other, effectively, aren't they? Likewise, multiplication and division are inverse operations of each other. And we have also things like squaring and square rooting. And we, th we could add to that list cubing and cube rooting. And if we're looking at trigonometric relationships like the sine of theta, then the inverse sine would be sine to the minus 1 of theta, which is on your calculator. So that means if I know the angle, I can find the sine of it. But if I know the sine of it, I can use the inverse operation to find the angle. So every operation has its inverse, effectively. Um, and in decil equations, we need an inverse to find out what this x is, and that's where logarithms comes in, as we'll see. So the indicit equation is an equation of this form, where the thing that you're after, x, is in the power, in the index. That's what makes it an indicit equation. And all the equations and formulae you'll come across in the exercises that we've just been talking about, none of those will have the x in the power. So if an equation involves the power where x is either in the base or the index, so this is the base of the number, that's the base and that's the power, the index. We've got what's called an indicit equation, and we solve it by using logarithms, usually to the base 10. So let's define these things, these logarithms. The logarithm to the base 10 of a number is the power to which I have to raise 10 to get that number. That's a statement that is worth reading more than once, and often to understand it, best to just look at an example. On your calculators, you've got a log button, L-O-G for log. If you type into your calculator, log of, and then a thousand equals, what do you get? Three. Now look at this statement again. The logarithm of a number, in this case to base 10, is a number to which I have to raise 10 to get 3. What is the power to which I have to raise this base, 10, to get 1,000? 3. That's effectively what a logarithm is. So if I find a logarithm of a number, what I'm finding is a number that I have to raise the base to, usually 10, to get a number. It's a bit, like, tortuous. What's log to the base 10 of 98 on your calculator. Give it four significant figures. 1.991. One yeah. So four significant figures. I was expecting a number nearly two. Why? Because two, 10 squared is 100. 10 to the power of 2 is 100, and this is nearly 100. So this number is the power to which I have to raise 10 to get 100. And if you look at your button on the calculator, and above it, you'll see 10 to the power. So that's like the opposite. 
So what is 10 to the power 1.991, if you do that, so shift log to get the 10 to the power 1.991, you'll get, near as damn it, 98. So, yeah, it wasn't. It won't be exact because you rounded it. Yeah. If you got the log and you'd left that number in your calculator and then hit ten to the power of that, and so you'd have got exactly ninety-eight. You just rounded it, haven't you? So, so that's what the logarithms do. They in they invert the power in a way. What if I want to know what is the number? So if ten to the what equals ninety-eight is my problem, then I've solved it. I've used logarithms to solve it. How do I find out what x is in this equation? I find the logarithm of 98 and that'll tell me the power to which I've got to raise 10 to get 98. So logarithms come into it. So we can think of the logarithm like an inverse, fun uh, inverse function, i.e. If 10 to the power x equals 36, that's our indicial equation, then how do we solve it? The log to the base 10 of 36 equals x. If I just write log on its own, that means to the base 10. So like when we square root, we never put the little 2 outside the square root sign. So if I write this, what's implied is a little 2 there, as we were discussing the other day. In the same way, if somebody just writes log of a number, like log 36, what's missing is 10. It's implied that there's a 10 there. Log 36 is 1.556, so therefore 10 to the power 1.556 equals, without doing that on the calculator, 36. Because that's the number that will give you 36. That's all well and good, so long as this is always 10. Okay? If it's not 10, then we either need um, the ability to use logarithms to different bases, which actually your calculator can do. If you look, you'll see you've got, on some of them anyway, you've got log and then it will, there's a little square for the base. So you can use that, find out how that number works, if that button works if you've got it. But even if you haven't, then we can still do it. So. Remember the logarithm is a power, usually of 10, so the laws of indices apply, but they are written as the laws of logarithms. If you remember for back from last to last week, we had the laws of indices written down. If I had 10 squared times 10 cubed, I add the powers to get 10 to the 5. The law of logarithm says, if, I've got the, if I find the logarithm of two numbers, a times B. Because I've found the logarithm, I've turned them into powers, I actually can add log of A to log of B. And that'll give you the answer. So the log of AB equals the log of A plus the log of B. Division, subtract the powers. So similarly, the log of A divided by B is log A minus log B. The one that we're going to find useful, log of A raised to another power, because log of A is a power, I've got one power raised to another power, and from the laws of indices, that means you multiply the power. So the, this N, the power, comes down in front, effectively, and becomes multiplied by log A. The laws of indices say that anything to the power 0 is 1, so the log of 1 is 0. So those are the laws of logarithms, and if you're going to write anything down, your formula sheet, or if you've got one for your maths, that would be worth making notes of somewhere separately. So you could extract that from these notes for later if you want. So let's see it in use. Look again at this one. 10 to the x equals 36. But think of it as an equation in the sense that whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So what we do is, we take our 10 to the x equals 36 and we log both sides. So the log of 10 to the x equals the log of 36. But 
these are inverse functions of each other, so it's like me saying, what's the square of the square root of 2? What's the square of the square root of 2? 2. The square and the square root are inverse, aren't they? So they cancel each other out, those operations, effectively. What's 36 times 5 divided by 5? 36. Okay. So if I do inverse operations, they effectively cancel each other out. Log to the base 10 of 10 to the x is x. So x equals log 36, and that's what we did before. But that's it written in equation form. What have I done? I've taken my 10 to the x equals 36 and found the logarithm of both sides. So it's like the equation thing with the balance. Whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other, and it works. That's what effectively you're doing. So let's apply that to a different example. Now we've not got the base 3. So I think you've got space now where you can write the answer to this. What do we do? We take the log of both sides. The log of 3 to the x equals the log of 112. What's implied but not stated is that's log to the base 10. Now I use one of these laws of logarithms. This one, the starred one, that's the, probably the most useful one. Because I've turned my left-hand side into a power, log of a, to another power, that power can come down and go in front of or behind and be multiplied. So in other words, I can go to this now and bring my x here down in front of the log 3. So I can write x times the logarithm of 3 equals the logarithm of 112. This is a number, log 3. You can find out what it is on the calculator if you want. Log 3, it's a number. This is a number, log 112. These are not separate to each other. It doesn't mean log times 3. Okay? It's a whole thing, log 3. So I could put a bracket around it. Log 112, okay? they're numbers. So on this left-hand side, x has been multiplied by log 3. So how do I get rid of log 3? divide by it. Divide both sides by this number, log 3. And now I do that on the calculator. If you've got the fraction button on your calculator, I suggest you use that. You'll see that fraction button. Put log 112 on top, log 3 underneath. x equals... four significant figures. What you got, Kieran? <coughs> log 112 over log 3. Did you... Oh, right, yeah, it expects you to close the brackets. Yeah, I know. 4.29, exactly, or... Right, because it's a power, it's in, it's important to hang on to some significance. <coughs> How do I check that's right? How do I check that's right? Yeah, put it back into the original equation. Go back up to the top, put it back into here.
put in x equals 4.295 here and see if 3 to the power 4.295 does equal 112 and it will do but again because the rounding error you know, you rounded it so it won't be exact so what is this logarithm it's something it's a power it's a power of a base usually base 10 how do we use it? We use it to solve indicit equations where the unknown is in the power or actually is in the base. <coughs> okay, let's look at one more. Right, you're going to tell me what to do on this one. First thing. If the unknown is in the power, find the log of both sides. Which means you can then use this law here to bring, whoops, um, this law here to bring that power down, whatever it is in the power, and in this case that will be um, x plus 2 down, and becomes a multiplier then. And then we can solve the equation using the normal methods of solving the equation. So I'll just pause this for a minute while you have a go, and then we'll look at it together. First thing, as we've mentioned already, take the log of both sides. Log of this slot for to the x plus 2 equals log 13.8. That means that this x plus 2 can come down and become a multiplier. So x plus 2, the bracket, multiplied by the log of 4 equals the log of 13.8. Remember these are numbers. The log of 4 and the log of 13.8 are just numbers. So I can divide both sides by that log of 4. x plus 2 equals the log of 13.8 over the log of 4. And now, using the technique we were talking about earlier, 2 has been added to the x, so subtract the 2 from both sides. x equals the log of 13.8 over the log of 4 minus 2 and I can do this in one hit on the calculator I'm emphasizing this because it's important to do it if you do the log of 13.8 and round that and then the log of 4 and round that and then divide one by the other you're compounding the error in a way so use the power of the calculator and the fraction button to do that in one hit and you can set this equation up, that fraction, minus 2, in one hit on the calculator. Most times you can do it in one go on the calculator, and I recommend you do that. D try not to write down intermediate steps. And then you get the answer x. And what does it come out to be? Minus 0.107. Did you say? Agreement? So I'll take that as nods around the room that, yep, yeah, that's okay. But how can we check? Yeah. So to be sure, of course, if this was an engineering scenario and you were going to use this number in a further calculation, it was important that you got it right, you can check. Often you can check. Put it back into the original formula. Does 4 to the power... Um, minus 0 0.107 plus 2 equal 13.8 and I can literally write that into my calculator I'd probably put the 2 first 4 to the power brackets 2 minus 0 0.107 equals hopefully it'll be about 13.8 and then I know I've got it right okay again there are more 
there's an exercise on dis in distal equations in the textbook and you can have a go at some, okay? There are examples, work problems in the textbook on all of these things, so you can look at some of those, try them out, join the tutorial.